In the previous lecture, I explained how we can integrate the continuous time signals. Now in this presentation, we will solve one question which is based on the discussions of the last lecture. In this question, signal xt is defined like this and we need to find yt which is integration of signal xt from minus infinity to infinity. Here we have t and we will go on increasing this t to infinity and we will see what is the integration of signal xt. Now the first thing which I will do here is to plot the waveform of signal xt. It is already defined and by using the definition we can have the waveform of signal xt. When t is equal to 0, e raised to power 3t will be 1 and also e raised to power minus 2t will be 1. So when t is 0, we will have 1 as the value of signal xt. When t is less than 0, we have e raised to power 3t. t will be always negative. So we will have 1 by e raised to power 3t. And if you make t more and more negative, the value of signal xt will decrease because the denominator will be increasing. So we will have a waveform like this. When t is greater than 0, this means t is positive. The definition of xt is e raised to power minus 2t. So here also we will have 1 by e raised to power 2t because t is always positive. And if you go on increasing t, the value of signal xt will decrease. But the decrement is not fast as compared to e raised to power 3t. So we will have a waveform like this. So this is how the waveform of signal xt will look. And if you remember the last lecture, I explained three different methods to integrate. In method number one, we directly obtained the integrated waveform by following the graphical integration. But there was one limitation on the graphical integration. The graphical integration is only limited to the signals which are related to step. This means you can have the integration of the graph only when the signal is rectangular. But in this case, signal is not rectangular. This means method number one, we cannot use in this particular case. Regarding the method number two, we obtain the mathematical representation of signal which is related to ramp and step. But in this case, the signal is not related to ramp and step and also the definition or the mathematical representation is already given. So we will also not use method number two. So the only remaining method we have is method number three. So let's use the method number three. In method number three, the first thing we do is to find out the barrier. And in this case, the barrier is equal to zero. Now what is a barrier? A barrier is an instant of time or instance of time more than one before and after which the value of the signal is changing or the definition of signal is changing. Like in this case, when t is equal to zero, before t, the definition of signal is e raised to power 3t. And after t, the definition of signal is e raised to power minus 2t. So the definition of signal is changing. So if you choose a range like this and you directly integrate it, then you will not have the result because in between, in between this range, the definition of signal is changing. So you first need to integrate the signal from this limit to zero and then again from zero to this limit. That's why this point or this instant of time is known as barrier. And in method number three, barriers are important because based on barriers, we will integrate the given signal. Now let's see how we can perform the integration. We will start from minus infinity and we will go on incrementing the time slowly. And as zero is the barrier, we will first integrate from minus infinity to t where t is less than zero, where t is less than zero. And then we will integrate from minus infinity to t where t is greater than zero. So let's quickly perform the integration signal yt is equal to integration of signal x tau d tau from minus infinity to t when t is less than zero and again we will integrate from minus infinity to t signal x tau d tau when t is greater than zero. 
Now let's perform the integration. We will use the definition given in the problem. When t is less than 0, when t is less than 0, you can see xt is equal to e raised to power 3t. Therefore, we will have integration minus infinity to t. Instead of xt, we have x tau. Therefore, we will have e raised to power 3 tau d tau when t is less than 0. Now, in the next case, when t is greater than 0, you can see the barrier is included. Therefore, we will first integrate from minus infinity to 0, which is the barrier. And for this, the definition is e raised to power 3t. So, we will have e raised to power 3 tau d tau plus we will integrate from 0 to t. And here t is greater than 0. This means this portion of the signal waveform is included in this integration and it is defined by e raised to power minus 2t therefore we will have e raised to power minus 2 tau d tau so this is what we have in the second case and now we can easily perform the integration to have our final answer when you integrate e raised to power 3 tau you will have you will have e raised to power 3 tau divided by 3 e raised to power 3 tau divided by 3 and the lower limit is equal to minus infinity. The upper limit is t when t is less than 0. Now when you integrate e raised to power 3 tau from minus infinity to 0, we will have the same result. Only the upper limit will be replaced by 0. So we will have 1 by 3. And when you put the upper and lower limits in e raised to power 3 tau, let's see what we have. e raised to power 3 multiplied by 0 minus e raised to power 3 multiplied by minus infinity e raised to power 3 0 will be 1 and e raised to power 3 raised to power minus infinity will be 0 so we have 1 therefore we will have 1 by 3 plus integration of e raised to power minus 2 tau will be 1 by minus 2 e raised to power minus 2 tau the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is t when t is greater than 0 in the next step, we will have the final answer of this question. From here, we will have 1 by 3 e raised to power 3t. This is when t is less than 0. And from here, we will have 1 by 3 plus 1 minus e raised to power minus 2t divided by 2 when t is greater than 0. You can perform few simplifications to have different forms of the answer but you can say this is the answer of the question and now I will perform few simplifications so that you can have different forms of the answer because sometimes when you have multiple choice questions even if you have the correct answer it will not be matching to any of the given options. In that scenario you need to have the different form of the same answer. So let's see how we can modify the answer. 1 by 3 e raised to power 3t when t is less than 0 this will remain same and from here we will have 5 by 6 minus 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2t when t is greater than 0. Now you already know what are step signals and when t is less than 0 this means if you multiply something by u of minus t it will automatically be defined for t less than 0 and when t is greater than 0 this means the signal value is only defined when t is greater than 0 you can have ut multiplied to the definition of the signal so you can remove t less than 0 from the definition if you multiply u minus t to this and you can remove t greater than 0 if you multiply ut to this so we can write signal yt, we can write signal yt as 1 by 3 e raised to power 3t multiplied to u minus t. Then we will have plus inside the bracket 5 by 6 minus 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2t u of t. This is what we have. You can further simplify this because we know the property of unit step signal ut plus u minus t is equal to 1 so we can write u minus t as 1 minus ut so let's do this in the next step 
1 by 3 e raised to the power 3t. Instead of u minus t, I will write 1 minus ut plus this part will remain same. Now you can take ut common. You can take ut common and in the next step, we will have e raised to the power 3t divided by 3 plus inside the bracket minus e raised to the power 3t divided by 3 plus 5 by 6 minus 1 by 2 e raised to the power minus 2t multiplied by ut. So we can write down the same answer in different forms. All these answers are correct but based on the given options you have to choose the correct answer. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. In the coming presentations we will solve few more questions based on graphical integration.